<clears throat> hey class, this is unit two, quiz two review. So I just wanted to record this in case you missed class or um, you need some extra review at home and you wanted to look at the quiz review prior to the test or the quiz on Tuesday. Okay, so consider the problem. If there are 45 coins in the bag, including quarters, dimes, and nickels, if you know the total adds up to 375, and that there are twice as many nickels as quarters and dimes combined. Can you figure out how many um, of each coin there is? So we have our three variables, and that's where we're going to start. We have, we'll just let x equal our quarters, and then y we'll put as dimes, and we'll do z as our nickels. So this is three variables. We're going to have three equations. Our first equation is always our total equation. So I know that I have 45 coins in the bag. So the number of quarters plus dimes plus nickels will equal 45. And then I know that there's 375 that it adds up to. So I can figure out um, the, that combination because I know that a quarter is 25 cents. So I'll put that as 0 0.25 per quarter plus a dime is 10 cents, so that's 0 0.10y, and a nickel is worth 5 cents, so that's 0 0.05, so be careful they don't put 50 cents instead, so 5 cents, 0 0.05z. And so if you have 25 cents per quarter plus 10 cents per each dime plus 5 cents per nickel, you know that you're going to add them all up and you're going to get 375. Then the last equation says that there's twice as many nickels as quarters and dimes combined. So twice as many nickels as quarters and dimes combined. So nickels is two times as many quarters, oops, I was going to use Q, quarters and dimes are X and Y combined, so X plus Y. So, for example, if I had five quarters and ten dimes, let's say I had five quarters and ten dimes, I'd get 15, then I would get 30 nickels. So I could just double check to make sure that that matches what I wanted to equal in the problem. Nickels, there are twice as many nickels as quarters and dimes combined. So quarters and dimes combined, and then that amount times two gives me the number of nickels. All right, so then to solve this, I need to set it up in an augmented matrix. So the first thing I'll need to do is line up that third equation so that it's x, y, z, and then your constant. So you're going to want to um, distribute the 2, 2 times the x and 2 times the y, and then subtract the 2x and 2y over to the other side. So that this third equation would be negative 2x minus 2y plus z equals 0. So that's what we're going to use in our augmented matrix. Because remember in the augmented matrix, we're going to want to set it up as x, y, z, and then the constant. And we use the augmented matrix to program the system into the calculator. So the augmented matrix turns our equation into a matrix and then the calculator can do the elimination for us and then gives us back our answer. So our first row comes from our first equation. The coefficients are 1, 1, 1, and 45. The next row would be 0 0.25, 0 0.10, 0 0.05, and then 375. And then we had negative 2, negative 2, 1, and 0 for our last row. So we got to throw that in our calculator then. If I have my calculator open still, it doesn't look like I do. Sorry, one second here. My calculator open. So open my calculator, go into matrix. I got to go over to edit so that I can enter this data. It's a four by four, one, one, one. I need to change this to 45, then 0.25. 0 0.10, 0 0.05, and 3, whoops, not negative, 75, and then negative 2, negative 2, 1, 0. And we go back to our home screen, exit back, go to matrix, go over to math, select RREF of matrix A, so I can use the shortcut key if I want. Oh, I don't think I selected it. 
R R E F. Where is it? There it is. Of matrix A. Enter. And my reduced row echelon matrix is equal to this 5, 10, and then 30. So my x variable was quarters. So that means that this is, you know, 1x, 1y, and 1, oops, 1z. And this is my equal sign. So that means x equals 5. So there are 5 quarters in that bag. y equals 10. There are 10 dimes in that bag. And then z was equal to 30. And there that was nickels. So there was 30 nickels in the bag. So then that would be my answer that I'm looking for. All right, I'll do one more with you. Consider this problem. Your team sold a total of 110 hot dogs, chips, and popcorn at the school fundraiser. You forgot to keep track of how many of each item you sold, but you know that you made a total of $197.50. You sold hot dogs for $1.50, chips for $0.75, cents, and popcorn for $2.50. You also remember that you sold the same number of popcorn as you did hot dogs and chips combined. You can use this information. Can you use this information to figure out how many of each you sold? So essentially, it's the same problem. It just looks a little bit different. Um, really, we have three variables again. It's, you know, hot dogs... And then, oops, hot dogs, not hot doggy. Um, let's see, Y could be chips, and then Z could be popcorn. Always define your variables so that you make sure to um, put the right, like prices and stuff, the right amounts with the right variable. So you told a total of 110 hot dogs, so X plus Y plus Z equals 110. I'm sorry, a total of hot dogs, chips, and popcorn all together was 110. And then the total amount of money you made was 197, where hot dogs were $1.50. So $1.50 per hot dog plus chips were 75 cents, so 0 0.75 for chips plus... 250 for popcorn and you made a total of $197.50 and then you sold the same number of popcorn as you did hot dogs and chips combined so popcorn was equal to hot dogs and chips combined so that was hot dogs x plus y so moving the last equation moving everything to the left so that you have it as x, y, z. It'd be negative x minus y plus z equals zero. Setting up the augmented matrix then. The first row would be 1, 1, 1, 110. Then 150.75, 250, and 197.50. Then negative 1, negative 1, 1, and 0. Then you put it in your calculator, you go to matrix, go over to edit, choose the first one, 111, got to change this to 110, and then be careful with the decimals so that you're putting in the right values. If you got something like a weird number or a weird decimal or negative values as answers, that will tell you that you did something wrong in these problems that I'm giving you should work out nicely. I spent a lot of time thinking about the problem, so I made something that you know works out nice. So from our home screen, we're gonna go to matrix, over to math, go down to um, row reduced echelon form again, and then choose matrix A, which I'm using the shortcut second and the four button to get matrix A there. So like this, this tells me that I probably have something edited wrong in my original matrices so yep I missed a negative with this one so I'm going to go back to double check that and then go back to the home screen and rerun that row reduce echelon form on matrix a and then this is what I get so one zero zero 
25, 0, 1, 0, 30, and then 0, 0, 1, 55, which means that I had, you know, sold 25 hot dogs. Um, oops, I can't read that. 25 hot dogs, X equals 25, Y equals 30 bags of chips, and then Z was twice as, or as much as the hot dogs and chips combined, so that was 55. All right, let's review matrix operations now. I wanted to start with the two word problems because I know that that's going to be the stressor for most of you. You're going to want to review the word problems. Solved if possible. So I have a constant times the matrix. So we just use the distributive property essentially. So you multiply that in. So negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Negative 3 times 17. I'm going to use my calculator. It's 51. So negative 51. Negative 3 times 2 would be 6. And negative 3 times 10 would be negative 30. It's getting late here. So... No mental math on multiplying by 17. So that's all you do for a problem like that. Multiply, distribute that in. All right, matrix multiplication is only possible if the inside dimensions match. So if I do a 2 by 2 and then a 2 by 3, I am able to find this answer because the inside dimensions are equal. And then the answer matrix will be a 2 by 3. So I will have two rows and three columns in my answer. All right, and then you got to do rows times columns. So horizontal and vertical. Then you multiply like five times negative four is negative 20 plus, then I do four times the three and that's 12. Then add those together, negative 20 plus 12 is negative eight. All right, then do row one with column two. And I'm going to do five times the three is 15. That goes row one, column two spot. Then four times the zero is zero. Then add those two products. 15 plus zero is 15. Then column one times row three, or row one times column three. Sorry, I'm tired. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 4 times 1 is 4. 10 plus 4 is 14. So then after you've done every column with row 1, then you go back and you do row 2 times column 1. So row 2 now times the first column. That's going to go here, row 2, column 1 spot. Multiply the 2 and the negative 4 and get negative 8. And then multiply negative 1 and the 3, and that's negative 3. And then add those two together to get negative 11. Then row 1, or row 2 times column 2. So now I'm multiplying this column. So then it's 2 times 3 is 6. And then negative 1 times 0 is 0. 6 plus 0 is 6. And then one more time, the last column with the row 2. So then 2 times the 2 would be 4 plus negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. 4 plus negative 1 is 3. So this would be my final answer for the matrix multiplication. All right, for addition and subtraction, in order to do this, the dimensions have to be identical. They have to match up. So here we have a two by two, two rows, two columns. This one's two rows by three columns, column one, column two, column three. And so the dimensions are not equal. So we cannot or add those. Those are not possible. We could multiply them, but we cannot add them. In the subtraction one, we have a two by three matrix, but it subtracted two by three matrix. So we are able to subtract this. Um, the best thing to do when you have like a minus, and notice I have a three out here, I like to think of it like this. I would think of this as keep the first one the same, and then I'm going to add a negative three times the second one. So change it to adding the opposite, because adding is easier than subtracting. 
And then I'm going to take a negative 3 and distribute that through because multiplication comes before addition. So I'm not going to change my first matrix yet. Plus, and then negative 3 times everything in the second one. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Negative 3 times 0 is 0. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. And then adding to get a final answer. Remember when you add matrices, you add corresponding spots. So like those two spots, which would be 2. And then 5 and negative 6 would be negative 1. 3 and 9 would give me 12. So it's my whole first row. Then moving to the bottom, 2 plus negative 12 would be negative 10. 7 plus 0 is 7, and negative 1 plus negative 15 is negative 16. So again, I changed the subtraction to adding the opposite, and I distributed the negative 1 in, or the negative 3 in, because multiplication comes before addition in the order of operations. After I multiplied everything by negative 3, I added to get my final answer. All right. Lastly, you might see something like this. <clears throat> so I have an equation here. So I need to solve the left side first and then set it equal to the matrix C on the right. So this is matrix multiplication. So first I have to verify that it is possible and I have two by two times a two by two, so I can do it. And my answer will be a two by two. Uh, my first row, first column, so first row by first column here, I'm going to multiply the 2 times the 2x and get 4x, and then you're going to multiply negative 3 times 3, and you're going to get negative 3, and you're going to, or negative 9, you're going to add those. So 4x plus negative 9 is just going to be 4x minus 9. Then I'm going to do row 1, column 2. So I'm going to multiply the 2 times the negative 1 and get negative 2. And then multiply the negative 3 times the 5y and I'm going to get negative 15y. And then adding them together, I'm going to get negative 2 minus 15y. Okay, then I'm going to multiply the second row by the first column. And I'm going to take the 1 times the 2x is just going to be 2x. And then the 6 times the 3 is going to be 18, and you're going to add those, so you're going to get 2x plus 18. That's as far as I can go with that one. And then the last, the second row here by the second column, so second row, spot, second column. So 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, and then 6 times 5y is 30y, and adding those two together. And then that is equal to this matrix over here, 3, 28, 24, and negative 61. So you can choose, you know, you have two options to solve for y or two options to solve for x, and you can really choose either one. Let's say I want to just take 4x minus 9. That's in the same spot as 3 over here. So if I take 4x minus 9 and set it equal to 3, I can add 9 to both sides, and I get 4x equals 12 and I get x equals 3. So my first answer here would be x equals 3. If you were to set you know, 2x plus 18 equal to 24, you would have gotten x equals 3 as well. So you should get the same answer there. To solve for y, I'm going to do negative 2, negative 2 minus 15y equals 28. So negative 2 minus 15y equals 28. I'm going to have to add 2 to get negative 15y equals 30, divide by negative 15, and y equals negative 2. You could do the same thing with this last one, and you would get negative 2 as well. So either way, you would solve for x and y, you get the same answers. All right, this is the same problem as the last one. So I'm going to go on to write an augmented matrix and solve. So I included this example because I wanted to remind you that for an augmented matrix, 
you need to have an x, a y, a z, and then the constant has to line up. So the first row, the coefficients are 1, 2, negative 1, negative 1. So 1, 2, negative 1, negative 1. For my second row, I don't have a z. I have an x and a y. So the x is 8, the y is negative 4. I have to put a 0 in for z, and then the constant's negative 32. And then the last equation, I have a no x, no y, z is 9, and then my constant is 18. So you have to make sure you put the zeros in the right places for the variables that are missing. And then over in the calculator, remember you go to matrix. The first step is to edit the matrix and enter this into your calculator. So it's a 3 by 4. So those are my dimensions. And I got 1, 2, negative 1, negative 1. And then 8, negative 4, 0, and negative 32. And then 0, 0, 9, and 18. Go back to the home screen by hitting exit or second quit. Back to matrix. Go under math. Select row reduced echelon form. Then select your corresponding matrix. And you will get your reduced matrix. So it's your calculator did all the elimination for you and told you that x equals negative 3, y equals 2, and z equals 2. This can be written as an order triple, triplet, negative 3, 2, and 2. All right. That's all I'm going to do for this video. I have a... Um, actually, maybe I'll show you this quick. I have these problems too. Um, you could do elimination or substitution. Number seven would be a really great substitution problem because you could add y and get one plus y for x and then plug in for x and plug in that one plus y into the second equation and then finish solving for y. So then two plus two y plus four y equals 26. So then 2 plus 6y equals 26. Subtract 2, 6y equals 24. Divide by 6, y equals 4. Plug that back in up here for x, and x equals 1 plus y, so x equals 5. So 5, 4. Um, if they're lined up nicely, you can actually solve using a matrix as well. You would just set it up. Here's your first row would be 3, 6, 6. Your second row would be 2, negative 3, and 4. And then you'd put it in your calculator as a 2 by 3 matrix. So you go to matrix, you go over to edit. I'm going to put it in B. So it'd be a 2 by 3. And you do 3, 6, 6, 2, negative 3, 4. And you go back to exit, go back to matrix, and run the row reduced echelon form. I put it in B this time, so I have to select matrix B. And it gives you the reduced equation, so it does all of the work for you. And so that means x equals 2 and y equals 0. So my answer here would be 2, 0. So you can actually solve systems of two variables and two equations with matrices as well. That's kind of a neat trick. All right. Thanks for watching.